There we go. Right on. All right. All right. So, uh, <laughs> how, how is voting immoral? All right, great question. I'm going to ask you uh, three simple questions, and then we're going to talk about the hidden violence behind voting in the state. Okay. Right. In your day-to-day -day life, do you use violence to solve problems? What? In your day-to-day -day life, do you use violence to solve problems? No. All right. And uh, with the exception of self-defense of yourself and others, would you consider it wrong and immoral to initiate that violence? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Right. I mean, uh, self-defense is not violence. That's like yeah. self-preservation. You have a right to uh -huh. protect yourself and to help others that can't, right? Property rights begins with self-ownership. Uh, so the third question will be is, would you consider it wrong and more to violently force your ideas onto other people? Uh, yeah. All right. So you just tell me, in your day-to-day -day life, you have a plurality of nonviolent solutions that you apply and use, right? And as a community of individual people here in Richmond, you also want to solve problems too. But the state says the only way we can solve problems here is to vote. So people vote. But their ideas are solving problems, and in effect, we elect a politician. And that politician, his or her only job is to legislate those ideas into laws. And those laws of ideas are backed and enforced by the police at gunpoint. Right. Take marijuana laws, for example, right? Smoking a piece of plant, you're, you're kidnapped, arrested, thrown into a cage, a prison, and at any point you refuse, and at any point you don't agree with those ideas and you resist, you're met with more violence, sometimes shot, murder, right? And it's even fun to more violence because at no point can you say, I want to help the poor, but I don't want a fun war, right? You have to give me your money, you have to give me your property, you have to give me your taxes, right? Because if you did have a freedom of choice, they wouldn't threaten you with a cage at the end of it. Right? They can send Wesley Snipes to jail for not paying his taxes. They could certainly send anyone else there to jail for not paying their taxes too. Right? And so that's that's the hidden violence. The state only knows how to solve problems the one way, and that's violence. And it's even fun with the more violence versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that all of us use in our day to day lives. Right? Um, and so that's really what, what this is about. It's, it's a movement, it's a freedom movement against the idea that violence will set us free. And not just state violence, but the violence we do to each other, the violence we do to children. Right? But no exceptions. Right? There's no compromise to freedom. Right? There's violence begets violence. Um, and really what this is about is just to talk to people about freedom. Right? Um, and this is a freedom movement that can take place anywhere. Right? You don't need camping gear. You know, you don't need a permit. You don't need marching protests. You know, the state knows how to solve that stuff. And they'll, they'll do it really good. Right? In the middle of the night while everyone's celebrating Halloween like they did last year here. You know? Sit on those capital steps. You know, the state wants to do that stuff. This is a freedom movement where you don't need any of that stuff. It could take place anywhere, at a sidewalk, at a cafe, um, in the privacy of your own home, right? The state can never stop us from simply talking with one another, right? To talk about the head and vice, to talk, it's really, to talk about philosophy, to talk about freedom. Um, and that's, that's pretty what this is, this is about, helping to uh, help people see that, that we all don't use violence, right? We all have balance for equality for nonviolence and freedom, right? And to show people the matrix, you know, help them see the matrix a little bit and encourage them to talk to other people. Um, and that's the only way we can really be free, have real freedom in our lifetime. Right, you look at the National Defense Authorization Act that was passed over New Year's, you know, like the Tet Offensive, while we're all inebriated, right? Um, and we keep losing more and more freedoms. And government keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And people say salvation comes through politicians, through legislations, through Capitol Hill, but change doesn't start in a White House in D.C. Right? It doesn't start overseas, it starts with ourselves first. Right? It starts at home in our own community. And to put that spotlight out there for freedom, people will see that. Right? Don't go out there interventioning in other countries, telling how freedom is, and we're already losing more freedoms here. Right? We're probably number one at something. Right? That's, losing, that's engaging our own people here. Right? Um, I don't know, so I'm sorry I got, got a little into it, but, uh, but that's, that's really what this is about. Um, it's, it's a freedom movement. I mean, we're already occupied. We're already occupied. We're already occupied by the state. We're already occupied by the police state. We're already occupied by violence, right? Um, it's time to liberate that. Right? It's, time to, it's not waiting around for someone to, to do it for us. It's not for us to do it for ourselves. Uh, for all of us to draw that moral line in our own community, to say enough is enough, you know? Um, and instead of people saying, well, you know, if you don't like it so much, why don't you move? It's become a uh, fucking power, you know? You start standing up for what's right. You start standing up to all this violence, including the head of violence, you know? Um, so anyway, so what do you think? We have a freedom gathering on the 29th. So we have more. Uh, it's on the 29th. It's a Saturday. Uh, so it's, it's uh, less than a five-minute bike ride from here. Uh, we're having uh, like a potluck, we have a freedom discussion and a philosophical discussion and then like an after party. Uh, fire pits, you know, outdoor movie theater projector, the works. Um, Where is it? So that's uh, Maplewood, well, um, I guess near uh, the fan, you know where the uh, police station is, the third district police station? 
Yeah, I think so. Yeah? yeah. All right, so it's right next door to Oregon Hill, pretty much. Uh, but you'll find all of it on our next website. Oregon Hill, that's... All right, Oregon Hill, Randolph You, you mean the, the one on Meadow? Yeah, 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 the one on Meadow. Yeah, yeah actually, it's right off Meadow. Maplewood Avenue. All right, so you, you live, you know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming all these people here, it's like, like, like me when I first came here. Uh -huh. It's like, you know, I have no idea where the fuck I am. It's like, all I know is uh, the Ohio over there, and that's all I need to know. <laughs> um, but yeah, all our stuff is on our website, libertyrba.com. Um, the events are on there, too. And um, yeah, it would, it would be great uh, for you to come over. You have more questions or anything like that. Yeah? All right. Well, I'm Cal, by the way. Uh, no, no, pleasure to meet you now. Hey, I'll be here pretty much every day throughout the semester. If you have more questions or you want to talk more about this. <laughs> All right, man. Take have care.